Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for March 15th through 21st, aka the longest week in human existence. This week I read three books, I read one webcomic, I watched four shows, I watched three movies, I listened to one podcast, and I listened to one audiobook. Just as a little personal life update, and this is basically all I'm going to say about what's going on in the state of the world, uh, my work closed down as of Monday. I'm doing okay. They're currently paying us, which is really kind of them. And because I technically live in a bachelor suite with somebody who is at a higher risk of catching COVID-19, I'm actually now staying at my boyfriend's house for the foreseeable future. The first book I finished this week was The Avant-Garde's Volume 2. This is a graphic novel about a ladies basketball team that also has at least one non-binary character on the team. It's full of tons of queer rep and different identity rep and people of all colors and I really really enjoy it. I think by now we probably know that I like my queer sports graphic novels and it's great to have one that's focused on primarily women and then also our non-binary friends. As you can probably imagine this basketball league is very very small and they're facing potential budget cuts, which really sucks. So this was a mixture of them going to games and then interpersonal activities between the characters, as well as what's going to happen with the League. I really like it and will continue to read it as the volumes come to my library assuming that my library ever reopens. I also read The Outside Circle. This is a Canadian graphic novel about Indigenous people in Alberta and kind of the cycle of violence that they've faced. It primarily focuses on one character who is doing some not so good things to get by and support his little brother. His mom has become an addict and is just shacking up with other people that can provide drugs. One of those people comes at him one day, he ends up killing that person in self-defense and going to jail for it. After that he's provided with the opportunity to go to a place of healing and learn about the injustices that have historically faced people in the Indigenous community, which is a very good learning tool for us also reading it and restorative justice. This was a very good graphic novel. I highly suggest it. This week I also finally finished Ruthless Gods, which is the second in the Something Dark and Holy trilogy. Um, this is an arc. This one doesn't come out until next month, but I've been sitting on it for quite some time because I wanted to read it closer to the publication date. I started reading this back on March 4th and it took me a while to get through because it was what I was primarily reading as we were getting all of the news of what's going on in the world and I got to the point where I just couldn't read more than a few pages at a time without my mind wandering and it wasn't this book's fault. There's a chance that some of it was its fault, it's hard for me to separate that out. Um, but I have had a lot of just like my mind wandering and not being able to just sit and focus. And something that actually helped with that is I'm currently doing the 24 and 48 social distancing stay home readathon and I sat down and finally finished it. It took me a good three or four hours to finish the last 150 pages because it's an over 500 page book but I got it done and I feel really good about it. Obviously being the second in the series there isn't much I can tell you about it and I finding really hard to figure out how to rate it because of this very unique reading situation but as it stands I think I'm just gonna put it at a three. A three is not a bad rating, a three is not a particularly great rating, but that's how I feel about it right now because of my experience reading it and nothing to do with what was in the book really. My mind kept wandering so I had had to keep going, oh wait who is this character again? Do I remember them from the first book? All of those things. On to the webcomic I read this week, I read Fangs by Sarah Anderson, who you probably know of Sarah Scribbles. This is kind of an adult graphic novel about this werewolf and this vampire who are dating. It's usually just about four panels per page and it's really funny and I very much enjoyed it. I had read a little bit of it before but I just kind of went back to the beginning and read it all and I highly suggest it because it is so funny. My boyfriend, my new roommate, and I also watched the entire fourth season of The Expanse. I was incorrect previously. I thought that this was going to be the last season, that we weren't getting any more seasons, but there is at least going to be a fifth season, so good. There's not much I can say about this season, especially because like it would spoil three seasons worth of stuff. Besides, I'm really enjoying watching it with somebody who's read all the books, so she can occasionally weigh in with things that were a little bit different. Also, we continue to really like Amos. Amos is a wonderful character, and I want to see more from him in the future, so... There was a point where we were wondering if they were going to kill off 
part of the main four characters, and I was just like, if that happens, I can't watch the show anymore. It's just, no. I also finished the 11th season of RuPaul's Drag Race. I really enjoyed this because my top two of the season were number one and number two of the season, and that never happens. So that was amazing. And now I just can't wait for season 12 to finish being a thing and then come to Canadian Netflix, which I'm sure will take forever. Let's be honest, it always takes a while. My actual roommate, who is home alone, if you're paying attention, and I actually watched the first episode of the fourth season of Better Call Saul. This is a show that we were watching together and we basically set up Skype, pressed play at the same time on Netflix and watched the first episode. We're going to try to do this every couple of days, except for this weekend is not good for me because I'm trying to read for 24 hours in a 48 hour period. And because I need sleep, because I'm getting old, that's only like four hours of wiggle room a day, so I couldn't fill one of those hours with watching a show, unfortunately. This show is incredibly well written and I very much love watching it with somebody else who is learning a little bit more about cinematography because he's teaching himself some editing and we can talk about those things and just the choices that are made and I'm very much enjoying it. Megan also showed me Has Been Hotel, which is something that currently only has a pilot. It is a really wonderful cartoon about this girl who just wants to create this hotel in hell that is kind of like a halfway house to getting people out of hell and like to a better place and it's a musical and I'm gonna link it down below and she was shocked that I had never seen it before because it ticks so many of my personal boxes and now I'm gonna just keep watching it over and over again until somebody picks it up and makes this entire cartoon a thing. On to the movies we watched this week firstly being A Million Ways to Die in the West this one is a Seth MacFarlane movie. It had some really great humor in it. It had some humor that was a little bit iffy, but you're gonna have that with basically anything Seth MacFarlane does. It also had a star-studded cast, so there were many points in this that I really enjoyed it and went, oh, it's that person. I haven't seen them in forever. And we've spent a lot of time just quoting the little one-liners from his dad. So that has brought some happiness into our lives. Also, in lieu of listening to this book, because I was supposed to listen to it this week and then decided I didn't want to, I watched the movie of Ready Player One. The movie is visually stunning. I very much enjoyed it. It's still not my favorite book. Definitely not the best book I've ever read in the world. Definitely some things I didn't like about it, but I knew that the movie was going to be visually stunning. It was, and I very much appreciated that. As a side note, Audiobookathon was basically uh, just a trash fire for me. I did read a bunch of things, I did check off a bunch of the prompts, but I also just didn't read most of my TBR because I, I just couldn't. I do a lot of my reading while I'm in transit, and I was not in transit at all this week. So there's that. The final movie we watched this week was a rewatch, and that was Shaun of the Dead. If you're not familiar with this, it is a zombie movie. It is probably my favorite zombie movie because it's horror and it's comedy. It's very clever. And if you are familiar with it and you haven't seen the very short video that Simon Pegg and Nick Frost put out, basically recreating one of the situations in the movie, I'm gonna link that down below because it's really good. On to the podcast I listened to this week. Yes, it's been a very long time since I've talked about a podcast on this channel because I tend to listen to audiobooks instead of podcasts as soon as I realized I could be doing that for free. However, this is a brand new podcast by Joseph Fink called Our Plague Year. This is all about what is going on currently in the world, but it is done in such a calming manner. And he has these guests who write pieces for it and record them. And like I said, it's done in such a calming manner that even though it is covering current events, it's not making me freak out about them. It's just me learning about other people's experiences as this unfolds. And I very much enjoy it. So if you need that kind of calming aspect in your life, definitely suggest it. The one audiobook I finished this week was It Wasn't Me. This one fit in for the full cast narration because it is a full cast narration. So I was happy to get my own challenge checked off of Audiobookathon at least. This book is about six middle school students. Theo created an art project that was vandalized and then the other five students seem to be the suspects and they can't figure out who did it. So basically they're all in detention for this week where everybody else has spring break or whatever and they're doing a restorative justice circle to try to figure out 
what happened, or basically just try to get to know each other and talk through their feelings. I found it very interesting that I read two different books that had restorative justice as kind of the central themes this week. Didn't plan that, really enjoyed that it happened though. This was fun and all the characters were very complex. We got to learn about their home lives and their motivations, and we eventually did figure out what happened and why people were trashing Theo's artwork, and it was a very nice read. I definitely recommend it if you like a full cast narration. It's not full cast all the time because a lot of it is narrated from Theo's point of view, but at the beginning of every day of this session, and it's a five day session, all of the students are filling out a form, basically like, where were you at the time of the incident? What happened? What do you think we need to do to restore justice? And that type of thing. And all of those voices are done by the teacher and then also the students answering the questions. So I appreciated that. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these things, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't want to leave a comment but want me to know you are here, leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!